Come on, how many exalt God this morning? Come on, let's keep the worship going. Worship is always in order in the house of God. How many exalt him this morning? Lord, we're not exalting you this morning for things, but we exalt you this morning for your presence. God, we thank you for your visitation this morning. God, we thank you for your visitation this morning. We thank you for your presence, God, that you took time to come and see about us today, God. God, we just thank you, Lord, because you're such a good God. God is such a good God. God, you're such a good God. And we thank you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can have take your seats. Thank you, Jesus. We give honor to God today, to our pastor in his absence, to Elder Easley, Elder Watts. We thank the Lord for being here today. I give honor to my wife. On Friday, the Lord has blessed us to celebrate 16 years of marriage. So I thank the Lord for that. So if offering is a little light, y'all can blame Sister Miller. <laughs> amen, amen. I'm not going to try not to be for you long. We got a dynamic preacher coming at 11.15, so I am, he can have some of my time. Amen. <laughs> Turn with me to Mark, the fourth chapter. And we're going to start at the 35th verse. In the same day, when the evening was come, he saith unto them, Let us go unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there was also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and said unto him, Master, care thou not that we perish? And he arose, and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? I'm going to use for a topic today that the Lord gave me was, Who is greater? Jesus or the storm Father we come before you right now Lord we say thank you Lord God for another day God we thank you for laying down last night God and awaking this morning God with our right mind God activities of our limbs God and Lord God we ask Lord God that you were blessed today God have your way in this place as only you can God move me out the way God that every word that I speak will be from you God and God, we ask, Lord God, that you even touch our pastor, God, while he's on assignment, God. I ask, Lord God, that you would use him in a mighty way, God, to speak through him, God, as only you can, God. Give him traveling mercies, God. Bless him and his companion, God. Keep them, Lord God, as only you can, God. Lord God, we will forever give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In this life, we're all going to have some trials and tribulations, and we're all going to have storms. Um, a songwriter put it like this, though the storms keep on raging in my life, sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. Still, the hope that lies within is reassured 
as I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place that he has prepared. But if the storm don't cease, and if the winds keep on blowing in my life, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. And that's, that's wonderful words. Everybody knows the song. If it's sang right, you got the right musicians, you can usher in the presence of God. But I challenge us to think, what really happens when the storm hits? What is really our response in the midst of a storm? When the storm is raging in our life, even though we know those words, we know the scriptures, we know what God has said, but what is really our response? We know that the commandment was given that we should think bigger. The commandment was given that it's our winning season. But when the storm is raging, do we feel like it's still our winning season? Or do we feel like because we're going through this, God has forsaken us? So what happens is we find ourselves stuck between the commandment and the fulfillment. Because in the scripture, God says, let us go to the other side. That was the commandment. When God commands something, anything he speaks has to happen. But between going and getting to the other side, there's a gray area. Because we don't know what is going to happen from the commandment to the fulfillment. So that's when the enemy normally strikes, when we're in the gray area. What do I mean? If I told someone that there was a blessing and there was a victory at my house, you would try to go to my house. But what you don't know is that you may have to go down Cold Spring, go down Charles Street, hop on 83, but then there's an accident on 83. So now the road is backed up. So what do we do when the road is backed up? Do we sit and keep on pressing forward? Do we take a detour? Or do we fuss and complain that we're sitting in traffic? Do our spirit change? Does our attitude change? Do we keep on going? Do we say, this traffic is too much. I'm not worth, it's not worth going all the way, fighting through this just to get there. But the commandment was given that the victory is at the house. So that's the same way it happened with the disciples. God gave them a commandment and said, go to the other side. But while they were in the midst of going to the other side, there was a great storm that rose up. And we know what the scripture says. We know Romans 8 and 28, we quote it all the time. That we for, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. Amen. We know this. We know it's working for our good. But what do we go by when our natural eyes see things that doesn't seem conquerable? When the storm is raging and you're being tossed to and fro. So the Lord let me know there's some characteristics of the storm which hinders us from keeping the faith. Number one, the storm brings instability. Because when you're in the storm and the boat is rocking and is waving and is rocking, it's hard to get your balance. And when you can't get your balance, you feel like one moment I'm doing good, then the next moment this is happening. And then as soon as I feel like I got this together, then this is happening. And now you're stuck. You're trying to waver. You're trying not to waver, and you're rocking back and forth, and you can't get your footing, and you don't understand. So we get to looking at the storm, and then we feel like God has forsaken us. Because on one moment, it looks like everything is going good. Then on this moment, it seems like everything that could go wrong would go wrong. But God would let me know we are blessed regardless of what situation that we find ourselves in. And oftentimes we put our blessings on tangible consequence, tangible things. And I've been on this thing lately. It seemed like the Lord just been having me on this thing of just thanking God for my right mind. Oftentimes 
we, we, we go to work. I speak to people at work. I say good morning. They walk by. They don't say nothing. And they just seem like their life is that bad, you know. And I try not, because of the way I work, you know, we can't really bring up politics and, and God. But when people ask me, I, I, I do what I'm supposed to do. And people ask, you know, why? They see me, they see Dante, and they say, why are y'all always so happy? Y'all always joking around, y'all always so happy. And I'm sitting there like, whoa, I don't have nothing to be sad about. Because every day I swipe my badge and I put in my pen, them gates open up. So that means I'm still employed. <laughs> every day that I wake up, I have breath in my body. Whether I'm walking to a 2018 or I'm walking to a 1998, the fact that God gave me ability to drive to work every day, the, day, the fact that he gave me my right mind, it is so important to have your right mind. So just because things are going a little wacky doesn't mean that you're not blessed. You're black, blessed because the fact that you have your right mind, the fact that you can go home after work and make it home safely, you're blessed. The fact that your kids can go to school and come home safely, you're blessed. I was telling somebody, I said, there was a day in time where kids was also off limits. There was a day in time where people, even though murders were still happening, kids was off limit. But there's no respect now. People can go into a school and shoot up kindergarten kids, first grade kids, little innocent kids that don't know nothing. The simple fact that they can go in. I was reading the article about the latest shooting, and it said every time the guy was shooting somebody, he was saying another one bites the dust. Every time he was shooting somebody, another one bites the dust. And I sat there and looked at this thing was like, and what, what really messed me up was one of the kids said, I was expecting this to happen. She said, I wasn't surprised that this happened at our school. All I knew to do was to run to save my life. I was expecting this to happen. And the thing messed me up. I said, it is sad that we're in a world where people are expecting trouble now to the point where it's second nature. Nobody really is really doesn't even bother anybody no more because believe it or not, there's so many school shootings that happen that never makes the news. I was researching it and it's amazing how many school shootings happen and nobody never hears of it. And I'm sitting there like, Lord, I just thank you for my right mind. No matter what I face, no matter what I'm going through, God, I just thank you for my right mind. Even in an unstable situation, I thank you. That's why the Bible say a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Because you got to be able to understand that God, even though I'm going through this, I still have my right mind. How many people have gone through what we have gone through and didn't make it? Some people have lost jobs. Some people have lost children. Some people have lost homes and they couldn't take it. So they feel like I'll just end my life. But we have, we've heard testimonies that people have lost everything. People have lost jobs, people have lost homes, people have lost cars, but God has given us a space of recovery. That's what it really means when we're in our winning season. It's not that I'm not gonna go through anything, but the fact is that when it's time for me to get mine, God has already laid it up for me. And I don't have to work as hard as you think I have to work. I just got to have the faith to believe that God is able to do it. So when the storms are raging in my life, I don't have to look at the storm. I can look beyond the storm and say, God, it's my winning season. God, I'm in this. Yes, I'm in it. I don't know when you're going to get me out. But all I know is when I do come out, I'm going to be as pure gold. So another characteristic is the storm brings distractions. I said, God, what do you mean? He said, it brings distractions. It brings two types of distractions. It makes you forget what God has already done. And it makes you forget who he is. I said, God, what do you mean? And he gave me a demonstration. So I'm going to have Brother Montez, Brother Frank can come up. Brother Monye, can you come up real quick, please? Line up according to size. So, 
I'm facing this obstacle right here. This is my storm that I'm facing now. I got a little weight on him. So now I can move him out the way. I can back him out the way. And he said, we can keep our praise here. We keep our praise here. We can keep our glory here. We still can give God thanks here because this is a storm, but I think I got a little control of it. I got him. I think if he grabs me, I'm strong enough to get him off. So now I can move that one to the side. Now I got hit this one. He's a little bigger. He's got a little bit more size on him. <laughs> but I still think I can, I can back him down. I think I still got a little control of him. So yeah, here we may have some stumbles. We have, may have a little instability. We may be rocking. But God, I, I think I can do this, God. Lord, I, I think I got this, God. God, God, it's hard, but, but I think I got it. So now he, you're still in the storm, and it grabs you. But you can, you can muscle with him. He's, he's, he's got a little strength, but I can muscle with him. So now I can, I can overcome this one. But now <laughs> I'm here. Now this storm is a little bit bigger, God. So now instead of focusing on who God is, now I'm looking at the distraction. Amen. So now I'm looking at the wind. Now I'm looking at the waves. Now I'm looking at the water. Because now I can't move this one so easily. So now I, I can't. I'm trying. God, I'm trying. So now I, I get to the point where nothing I do seems to be working. Everything, Lord, I'm trying. And then now we, we had this conversation. God, I'm just trying to do all that I know to do is right. God, I'm trying my best. Why am I going through this? What is going on, God? I'm trying. I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make some changes in my life, God. I used to do this. I used to do that. But now it seems like the moment I try to do good, evil is always present. So, Lord, I'm trying, but I'm, I, can't, I can't get over this. So now when he grabs me, I got to fight a little bit more now because it's a little bit bigger now. I got I to gotta struggle. I can't, I can't move them like I want to move them. So now I'm focusing on the distraction. I'm not focusing on God. I'm focusing on the distraction. And what he let me know was the disciples was worried about the water getting into the ship. But it was the water that got them to the other side. So when you're in a storm, you're worried about what you're going through. But what you're going through is what is actually taking you to fulfill the commandment that God had put on your life. Amen. Right. Because the boat couldn't sail without the water. So you're worried about the water getting in the boat, but it was the water that got you to the other side. So we're still here. Now we, we're still battling. Him. We're still fighting. And we're still fighting. And no matter, it seems like what we do, we're not getting nowhere. But God said, you can't look at the distraction. He said, look to the hills from which cometh my help. Because my help cometh from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. So... When I look to the hills, now I'm looking beyond, beyond the storm. I'm looking beyond what I'm going through. I'm looking beyond what it's facing. Because now when I look to the hills, I'm not looking at the storm. I'm looking at Jesus. And long as I'm looking at Jesus, I know everything will be all right. Because when I'm looking at Jesus, he's going to give me what I need. He's going to give me what I need to do to face the storm. He may give me a word. He may give me instruction. Well, the Bible put it like this. God has highly exalted himself and given us a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. So now I'm looking at Jesus. I'm not looking at what's going on. I'm looking at Jesus because if I'm keeping my eyes on Jesus, as long as I got my eyes on him, I can never go wrong. As long as I got my eyes on him, everything will work out fine. Yeah, the winds is blowing. Yeah, the winds are blowing. Yeah, the water is filling up. But I'm not worried about it because I can't see it because I got my eyes on Jesus. I got my eyes on Jesus. And so now what it happens is I'm still battling. It. But then I can hear the Lord say, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly of anything we could ever ask or think. That according to the powers that worketh in who? Us. I said, God worketh in who? Us. He said, look at it worketh in us he said tell them when they're in a the storm you have the same power i have 
I said, God, you're God. How can I have the same power I have? He said, David, I didn't reduce myself when I came into you. When I brought my spirit down, I'm the same God that Joshua prayed to that asked the sun to stand still. It's the same God that came in and filled this dirt body with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Because I came into this dirt body doesn't mean that I'm less God. I'm the same God. The same God that spoke and it happened is the same God that's living on you. So you have to learn how to look beyond the storm and speak. Speak to the thing. Lord, If even if I'm still in it, I'm still going to have peace. God, I'm going through, but I'm still going to have peace. God, I don't know how you're going to work it out, but I'm still going to have my joy. God, I don't know how I'm going to make it to tomorrow, but I'm still going to believe that you can do it. Because the Bible say, I once was young. And now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. So now I can just look beyond what I see. And then I can just praise God in advance. I don't have to see God to doing it before I give him praise. I don't have to see God working it out before I give him praise. Because our real praiser is going to praise him in the storm. I'm here. This is where I'm really supposed to be praising God. I'm supposed to be praising God when I'm in here. Because... Everything ain't going to always go good. Amen. Some things are not the devil. Some things are just life. Amen. Some things we go through are just life. And we can't give the devil credit for everything because he doesn't have that much power. Some things are just life. So now I'm here and I can praise God. And when I begin to praise God, I can turn and see what he already done for me. Right. Because now I don't look at the, the storm and the rains, but I'm looking back. God, I thought I couldn't make it through this. God, I thought I couldn't make it through that. God, when I was sick, I didn't think I was going to make it. When the doctors told me this, when they said that, I thought I couldn't make it. But now I can look back. And I can look back because the Bible said the Holy Ghost will bring all things to your remembrance. So I can look back and say, God, you brought me out of this. God, you brought me out of that. So yet would I trust you. Though you slay me, God, yet would I trust you. So I can look back and see how far he brought me from. How far he brought me from. That's why it's so important to have your right mind. Because if you don't have your right mind, you can't think on good things about God. But when I got my right mind, I can look back on Jesus and see that everything that he's done for me. When and I think on the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. My soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. I'm, y'all done, y'all done, I'm, I'm done. I'm, so he said, there's a good side to the storm. He said, after all that, there's a good side to the storm. The storm brings about a testimony. I said, what is the testimony? Now, thanks be unto God which always causes us to triumph and maketh, and maketh manifest the savior of his knowledge by us in every place. My testimony is the joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. That after all that I've been through, I still have my joy. After all that the devil has tried, I still have my joy. To have joy is a wonderful thing. That's why you can't put your joy in things because things change. The TV you buy today in four months is out of date. The TV you buy today in four months, is technology changes so much that by the time you drive your car off the lot, it's out of date. So I don't put my joy in this world, but I put my joy in Jesus because when I got Jesus, I got peace. When I got Jesus, I got healing. When I got Jesus, I got salvation. When I got Jesus, because I think about how he could have cut me off. How he could have ended my life. How he could have cut us off in our sin. But my testimony is, after all that I've been through, I still have my joy. I still have my praise. I still have a thank you down on the inside. I still have a Lord, I love you. I still have a glory. I still have, Lord, you're wonderful. God, I still have the highest praise, which is hallelujah. I still have you, God. That's all that matters. As long as I got you, Jesus, no matter what the storm seems like, long as I got Jesus, and that's what the disciples forgot. They forgot who was on board with them. They forgot Jesus was on board with them. And I said, God, what do that mean? He said, David, I was born to die, but I wasn't born to die like that. And the problem is we get in our sin and we feel like this is the end. But God told me to tell you, you're not going to die like that. You're not going to die like that because I'm on board. I wasn't slated to die in the storm. I wasn't slated to die in the river. I was slated to be hung for the foundation of this world. So you're not going to die like this. No matter what the storm looked like, 
no matter what it feels like, just know that God is still with you. Finally, he said, the storm brings revelation. I said, Lord, what do you mean? The storm brings revelation. He said, the revelation is that sometimes Jesus is all I have, but Jesus is all I need. When I'm going through, Jesus is all I have because Jesus is all I need. Jesus is enough. Then he showed me to the scriptures. Jairus, when Jairus' daughter was sick, he didn't have nothing else, but he tried Jesus. The people that was with him should have had enough faith to believe that God can do it, but they laughed. So he had to put them out. But Jesus was enough to tell his daughter to arise, and she arose. Then he showed me blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus didn't have nothing, but he called on Jesus. He heard Jesus was passing by. And all he could say was, Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy on me. And isn't it a wonderful thing that you don't have to say much? You don't have to say much to God, but he can hear between the Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy on me. He hears what you're going through. You ain't got to go into details, but all you got to do is call on his name, Jesus. God, I, Lord, I, I don't have nothing to say, but Jesus, I find myself in this situation, girl. God, words has left me, but all I can muster up is a Jesus. That's where there's power in his name. There's healing in his name. No matter what I do, God, if I can just muster up enough strength to call the name of Jesus, everything will be all right. But then I looked at it again, the woman with the issue of blood. She heard Jesus was passing by. She tried everything. Can you imagine trying everything and you have nothing left, but Jesus was still enough. She didn't have nothing else, but Jesus was all she needed. And she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, if I could just reach out, would let me know all I need is just a little bit of Jesus. I don't need much. I don't need to just be able to just hug him and grab him and jump on him. But if I can just find enough strength just, just to touch the hem of his garment because the hem of his garment has enough power to make me whole because I looked at my storm I was looking at my storm I know what the doctor said I know I was dying I had no other choice I had no other solution so let me try Jesus she had to fight through the people that was there she had to fight through and that's what we have to do sometimes we got to fight through the distractions we got to fight through the crowd and just make it. Lord, if I can just touch the hem of your garment, I know I'll be made whole. And then finally, there was the widow woman. The widow woman, she said, I had nothing else. I was going to make this cake, and me and my son was going to die. But she fed the man of God, which is like feeding Jesus. That if I feed the man of God, Jesus, Lord, I'm about to die. I don't have nothing else. I have no other solution right now it is a terrible place when you feel like you don't have no other solution but how did you feel when Jesus stepped in right on time when you felt like this is the end this is the end of the road God I have no other help I have no other solution I don't know what I can do and I give up but then Jesus stepped in right on time and when she obeyed the man of God she had enough every day every day Every day she had enough. No matter what she went back, she always had enough. And sometimes we have to learn how to thank God for just enough. We have to thank God. Lord, I thank you for Monday, God. I don't know what Tuesday going to bring, but I thank you for Monday. Lord, I thank you for Tuesday. I don't know Wednesday going to bring, but today I thank you for providing me for Tuesday. God, it's Wednesday now, God. Now I can look back and say, God, you looked out for me on Monday. You looked out for me on Tuesday. So now on Wednesday, I wake up with a better spirit because I know that you're going to work things out for me on Wednesday. And I'm not going to wait until Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, but I can lift my hands and give you praise right now. I can lift my hands and give you glory right now because you have already proven yourself. God has always made a way. So I just thank him because Jesus is all I need. He's all I need. I can't, I just can't fathom what would my life be without Jesus? Because when the storm's raging, when the winds are blowing, it's easy to give up. It's easy. That's the easy way out. The easy way out is always to throw my hands up and I walk out. But what if God gave up on us? 
What if God gave up on us when we're in the storm and we don't respond the way we know we should respond? What if God says, okay, I'm done with him or I'm done with her? What will we do? How will we be? But I thank God for a merciful God. I thank God for a merciful God because God knows what we're going to do before we even do it. We can't outdo God. We can't outslick God. He already knows when he put us in our tests and the trials, it's not to kill us but it's something to get out of us. When he puts us through our storms, it's not to kill us, but it's to get something out of us. Because sometimes we don't know where we are with God until we go through something. Sometimes we don't really understand how much God loves us until we go through something. Sometimes we wouldn't be in the position that we are until we went through something. I wouldn't have the prayer life that I had if I didn't go through this. I wouldn't worship you like I do, God, if I didn't go through this. I wouldn't exalt your name like I do, God, if I wouldn't go through this. So the storm is not to kill you, but it's the storm is to get something out to you. And it's storm is made to get you closer to God because you understand God now you did this there's nothing impossible for God there's nothing impossible for God and he began to let me know that we're talking about Operation Recover All and he said there's some people that's going to come in that's going to be giving away everything there's some people that's going to come in and they walked away from everything they don't have nothing else. They're trying Jesus. And if they come in here and we can't get through the storm, how are we going to help them get through the storm? Because there's some people that have going to be walking away from everything that they know because they realize that what I'm going through isn't going to make it. So let me try Jesus. And we have to be able to tell them that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly of anything we could ask and think the same power that God has that brought you out is the same power that's going to keep you while you in it but we have to show that light we have to show that example so we have to be able to face our storm with with our head up with our shoulders back giving him praise giving him glory giving him honor is it always easy no it's not always easy but i believe the more praise god gets the better i feel the more praise god gets the more strength i get in my body the more praise god get the more that he's working it out for me because i believe sometimes we and we make our trials longer by our response i think sometimes when we're going through and we don't respond the right way we're showing god well we're not there yet so I love you, but I got to keep you in this. Because if I didn't love you, I would just let you go and have that same attitude. I would just let you go and do what you want to do. But the fact that I love you, I got to squeeze you. I got to put some pressure onto you. Because I don't hear from you when everything is going good. I don't hear from you when you got money in your pocket, when everything is going good. But then when things going haywire, when the storm is raging, when the wind is blowing, when the water is in the boat, then you call my name. I love it when you call my name. It sounds good to me when you call my name. It's just, a, it's just, it's just so wonderful just to be able to call the name of Jesus. When you can just wake up. The fact that you have a relationship with God, that I can just wake up in the morning, fall on my knees and say, Lord, I thank you for this day, Lord God. The fact that I can wake up and say, Lord, you did it again. The fact that I can just wake up and say, God, I just thank you for loving me, God. The fact that I can just wake up and say, Lord God, I just thank you for dying on the cross for me, God. God, when you were sitting up there, God, you knew I would act up. God, you knew that I wasn't going to do everything right, but you sat there, God, on that cross, and you died for me. Having a relationship is such a beautiful thing, to have a relationship with the living, true living God. It is a blessing to be able to have that relationship and have your right mind. God, just keep telling me to thank God for my right mind. You hear stories all the time. At my job, I hear people, how can a person strap a bomb to their child? walk their child into a group of people and let the bomb go off. And I said, God, I just thank you for my right mind, God, that I can just wake up and have my right mind. Even though situation is tough, the fact that I have a God that I can talk to that can give me answers 
to my questions, that can give me a solution to my problems. God, I just thank you, God. So, Lord, I'm not going to focus on the winds. I'm not going to focus on the waves, God. I'm not going to focus on my environment, as pastors taught us. I'm not going to focus on my environment because if I keep focusing on my environment, my whole attitude is going to change. My whole spirit is going to change. But, Lord, I'm just going to look to the hills, God. I'm just going to look to you, God, because you are highly exalted, God. You are highly exalted, Lord. I'm going to set my reflections on things above but not things on this earth because once I look at God and I'm not going to look at his hands I'm not looking at his hands to see what he can give me but I'm going to look at his mouth so I can heed instructions I'm going to look at his mouth so I can hear the encouragement that he's going to give me that he's going to tell me it's going to be all right that weeping may endure for a night but joy is coming in the morning that Lord God everything is working for our good that I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth you got to have a right mind to be able to praise God when everything is going crazy you got to have a right mind to be able to know the name of Jesus there the, the most wonderful thing I know is Jesus and it's just such a blessing that I have Jesus to be able to share to my family to be able to share to my kids last night I was able to have the privilege to talk to my daughter and we just sat on the bed for about 30 minutes talking about Jesus talking and she was asking me questions I was explaining the baptism tour and I was explaining the Holy Ghost tour and just to see the look on her face I could say Lord I thank you God that you you allowed me to have a relationship with you that now I can turn around and give that same relationship to my children I thank you Lord that I had the right mind to heed to your word God and teach my children the right way Lord God is everything always all right no but I still look to the hills from which cometh my help, God. I still look to you, God. I still look to you, God, because I have no other solutions. God, if you don't come to my rescue, God, if you don't come to my rescue, I don't know what I'm going to do, God. If you don't work it out for me, I don't know what I'm going to do. That's how God really wants us to be. He wants us to be, God, if you don't do it, God. Because I don't want nobody else to get the glory. God, if you don't do it, God, if you don't save my children, God, if you don't heal my children, God, if you don't save my family, God, I don't know what I'm going to do, God. So I'm leaving it in your hands, God. I'm learning how to surrender everything to God's hands. I'm learning how to just give it over to him. I'm not stressing no more because I've learned if I put it in God's hand, he can do it way better than I can. And if he's allowing me to go through this, he's allowing it for a reason. So I'm learning and how to just submit and put it into his hands. I used to look at the storm, mother. I used to look at the winds and rains and be like, I can't believe God. How am I going through this? Why am I going through this? I'm trying to do everything that I know to do right. But man, I learned how to just give it to God. Look to Jesus. Look into Jesus because I know, God, you got it in your hands. You can do it way better than I can. Because when you got it in your hands, everything is working out right. When you got it in your hands, ain't nothing wrong. Even when it look like it's wrong, is still right God even when it looks like I'm losing I'm still winning that's why I can say it's my winning season it's not because everything is going right but the fact is that I can still give God praise in the midst of it I still have my mind in the midst of it I still have my joy in the midst of it that's really what it is my winning season is God I know you got it for me I know you got it for me it's over there but I'm not going to wait till I get over here but while I'm back here I'm going to give you praise God I'm going to give you glory I'm going to lift my hands up even if this flesh don't feel like it I'm still going to lift my hands and say Lord I thank you I'm still going to lift my hands and say Lord I love you God I'm still going to lift my hands and say God I give you all the glory because there is nobody like Jesus I searched all over and I couldn't find nobody like Jesus I searched all over I tried everything else but I couldn't find nobody like Jesus isn't it a wonderful thing to say I tried it see we can't be ashamed we can tell everybody I tried everything everything but else I tried this I tried that but I found there's nobody like Jesus who can do it like Jesus who can save like Jesus who can heal like Jesus who can deliver like Jesus and that's what the disciples forgot they forgot they said what manner of man is this they ought to know who Jesus was at this point, he already, he already was healing the sick. He already was raising the dead. The centurion said, Lord, come to my house because my servant is sick. 
He didn't even have to wait till he got to his house. All he had to do was send a word. They would have known, they should have known who Jesus was, but they were too busy being distracted. When you're focusing on your environment, that's what happened. You're being distracted and you forget who Jesus was. What manner of man is this? It's the man that sits high and looks low. It's the man that has all power in his hand. It's the man that I can call on. And at the very name of Jesus, everything can stop at one second. It doesn't take God all day to do what he needs to do. It doesn't take him all week. But if he, if it takes all week, I'm still going to give you praise until you do it. If it takes all month, I'm still going to give you glory until you do it. If it takes all year, every day, 365, I'm going to find a way to lift my hand and at least say, thank you, Jesus. If I can't do anything else... I can still lift my hand and say, thank you, Jesus, because there's something about thanking God. It bypasses what I'm going through. If I thank him enough, if I thank him enough, if I give him glory enough, I can forget what the environment is around me, and I can just close my eyes and just meditate on me and Jesus. There's nobody else in here but just me and Jesus. I get lost in Jesus. I get lost in him. No, I just get lost in him because I realize when he puts me in his arms and he puts me in his bosom and he's rocking me, and he's holding me there's nothing else that matters God Lord at that point Lord I may have to deal with something when I leave here but right now in this space and time God I'm just going to worship you I'm just going to give you glory I'm just going to give you thanks God because right now in this point of time that's where we're getting our strength from it's not because we just feel like oh God I'm not going through this but when we allow him to get into us when we get into his arms that's where we're getting our strength that's how you're making it and you're wondering God how did I make it through this week is when I made enough conscious decision to get into his bosom and while I was in his bosom he rocked me he hold me he gave me strength God he gave me revelation God he gave me answers uh, it may not happen right then and there God but I'm gonna stay in your bosom God and when you let me go God I know I gotta deal with this when you let me go huh? but while I was in your bosom God you let me know that everything was gonna be all right you let me know that God that this thing is only for a time and a season so while I'm in it I'm still gonna give you praise huh? because anybody can praise God when I'm outside the storm anybody can give him glory when I'm outside the storm but when I'm in the storm I'm gonna lift my hands I'm gonna find a way to muster up Jesus if that's all I can say Jesus 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 that's what I told my daughter last night I said baby when you pray just say Jesus you ain't got to say nothing else just say Jesus because when you say Jesus huh, he's got to answer you and when he answers he's going to come down and see about you and what he does he's going to put his spirit down on the inside of you it's not just know any old thing I said it's his spirit it's the peace of him the living God living down on the inside that's why I have the same power to speak to the thing and the thing has got to change I'm going to speak to my mind and say you will have peace I'm going to speak to my situation God Lord I don't know how long I'm in it but I'm going to speak to it I'm going to speak to it and say Jesus 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 I thank you Jesus I glorify you Jesus Jesus, I love you, God. Jesus, you're worthy, God. Jesus, you're worthy, God. Jesus, you're worthy, God. Jesus, I love you, God. Jesus, I love you, God. Because you're so good to us, Jesus. You're better than us, God, than we've been to ourselves, God. You're better than us, God. You're better, though, God. And I just thank you today. I thank you today. I thank you today because you're good. You're good, God. You're good despite of what I'm saying, God. You're good despite of what my natural eyes see. I still can say, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. And Lord, I just thank him. And I just thank him. So when you're in the storm, lift up your eyes. Don't focus on what you're going through. Lift up your eyes because if you, if you look at the rest of the scripture, when they got to the other side, there was a man possessed with many demons. So, when he got there, he had enough strength to fall. Even being demon possessed, he had enough strength to fall and ask God to help him. But what if, what if he had gave up in the midst of the storm? What if, what if, if we, we're riding in the storm and we just give up? What if we're sitting in that traffic and we just turn around and go back home? This man would have never been delivered. And he let me know that sometimes we got to go through our storms to help somebody else. And if we give up, we'll never fulfill the commandment that's on our life. 
because we can't get stuck in that gray area. We can't get stuck between the commandment and the fulfillment. We got to keep pressing until God fulfills it because when we get out of the storm, we may have to minister to somebody because there's some people, they, the only way they're going to know is through us. There's some people that only way they're going to know is through you. They don't have enough strength. They feel like they'll never be able to go back into the church. But if you minister to them and say, I went through it. And because God brought me out, he'll bring you out. The same God that delivered me don't love me no more than he loved you. He's going to deliver you. And then before you know, that person gets strength. And then they'll find a way to come into the house of God. See, because it's not about the building. The house of God is more than the building. It's more than these four walls. But there's some people that just feel like they can't go to God. They just feel like that God will never hear their prayers. God will never, because I don't always do the right thing. And we got to be honest enough to say, look, in my storm, I didn't do the right thing. I didn't always react the way God wanted me to react. I didn't always give him glory. But I learned that if I keep on pressing, if I keep on pressing, if I keep on pressing, pressing through the storm, pressing through the wind and pressing through that God was going to make everything all right and he did so if he can do it for me he can do it for you if he do it for me he can do it for you this thing is not a selfish thing it's not a one way thing the God that I serve he's big enough to bless anybody I told my daughter he can be in your room and be down the street at the same time because and she asked me she said daddy she said I didn't like when I used to wake up and cry in the middle of the night. I said, you don't do it no more, baby. She said, how, why I don't do it no more? I said, because I prayed and asked Jesus to touch the situation. And I just thank God that now, even at nine years old, she may not fully understand it, but at nine years old, she has a testimony that when she gets older, she can tell somebody that even in the nighttime, Something about the nighttime, the enemy tries to attack us at the nighttime because he thinks we sleep. But we got a God that don't slumber nor sleep. Something about the nighttime where the enemy thinks that, oh, I got him. I got him. But we got a God that he, he protects us. Because the Bible says, he that dwelleth in the secret place shall abide under the shadow. That means he's covering me. That means he's keeping me. That means he's looking over top of me. So when the, when the enemy comes, he says, oh, wait a minute. I thought I saw this person, but now I see Jesus. Now I see Jesus. Now I see the man that I thought I could defeat, but now I know that he has all power in his hand. And so you just got to understand that it's always not always going to be about us. I know it's hard sometimes, it's rough sometimes, but sometimes our storm is not going to be about us. Sometimes our storm is for somebody else. And if we can just have the strength to push through, if we have enough strength to push through, God is going to work it out. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we give God praise today? Can we give him glory today? Can we give God glory today? And so today we're going to, if anybody has a storm that they feel like they're facing, or they feel like they don't have enough strength to get it through, come meet us at the altar and we'll pray for you.